In this video, we look at how atoms and elements combine to form compounds and how we represent these compounds using chemical formulas. You'll recall that a compound is a substance in which two or more elements are combined in the same fixed proportion by mass. There are two types of compounds we need to consider as part of our studies, molecular compounds and ionic compounds. A molecular compound is a compound that consists of molecules, and a molecule is a chemically discrete and chemically distinct group of atoms bonded together. And we'll see in just a moment how that is different for ionic compounds. Molecular compounds are characterized by covalent bonds in which electrons are shared between atoms within the bond. And they consist of non-metals bound to non-metals. So involve elements from the top right hand side of the periodic table as well as hydrogen, which sits on the left hand side of the periodic table, even though it is a non-metal. Examples of molecular compounds include water, H2O, methane, CH4, ammonia, NH3, sulfur dioxide, SO2, and benzene, C6H6. And just a reminder that all of these molecular compounds consist of non-metallic elements bound to other non-metallic elements. Ionic compounds consist of positively charged and negatively charged particles called ions. Positively charged ions are called cations. Negatively charged ions are called anions. And these cations and anions are arranged in a solid three-dimensional semi-infinite lattice of alternating positive and negative charges. Ionic compounds are characterized by ionic bonds, which are electrostatic attractions that result from particles of opposite charge. And we deal with ionic bonds in the formation of ions in following videos. For now, the most important point to note is that ionic compounds consist of metals bound to nonmetals or metals bound to groups of nonmetals. So we are talking about elements from this part of the periodic table, the metals, combining with elements from this part of the periodic table, the nonmetals. Examples of ionic compounds include sodium chloride, NaCl, otherwise known as common table salt, strontium fluoride, SRF2, iron 2 sulfide, FES, lithium hydroxide, LiOH, and aluminium hydroxide, AlOH3. And just reiterating, all of these ionic compounds are comprised of metals bound to nonmetals or metals bound to groups of nonmetals. Now the rules for naming compounds will be dealt with later. For now we are going to focus on how we represent compounds using chemical formulas. In all the examples we just observed, the chemical compounds were displayed with their full name and a shorthand notation in brackets known as the chemical formula. Chemical formulas use atomic symbols of elements, which we can easily get from the periodic table, in combination with numerical subscripts to convey the relative proportion or actual numbers of atoms of different elements in a compound. For molecules, we refer to the molecular formula, which gives the exact number of different atoms of an element in a molecule. So for example, the water molecule is represented by the formula H2O, which indicates that there are exactly two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in a molecule of water. In the molecular compound ethanol, the chemical formula of C2H6O indicates that there are exactly two atoms of carbon, six atoms of hydrogen, and one atom of oxygen. Now you'll note in these chemical formulas that the number one is not explicitly written for each of the oxygen atoms in these compounds. In chemistry, we never write ones, and in any chemical formula where an element has no designated subscript, it is assumed that this subscript has a value of one. Now for ionic compounds, such as the sodium chloride structure shown here, we can't identify a discrete molecule within the lattice of positive and negatively charged ions. In this sodium chloride structure, each sodium atom is surrounded by six chlorine atoms, and each chlorine atom is surrounded by six sodium atoms. So there is no sodium chloride molecule to speak of. For that reason, for ionic compounds, we use the formula unit to represent the lowest whole number ratio of the elements involved. And in the case for sodium chloride, there are equal numbers of sodium atoms and chlorine atoms. So we represent this as a one to one ratio in the formula NaCl, remembering we don't explicitly write the ones into the formula. When writing chemical formulas, a useful general rule of thumb is that elements to the left and down in the periodic table tend to be written first. So for ionic compounds, this simply means placing the metal first since all metals lie to the left or down from the nonmetals. The metal will also be the positively charged cation, and so the cations are always written first for ionic compounds. Here we see the chemical formula for potassium oxide, 
K2O. And we can see from the periodic table that potassium sits on the left-hand side of the periodic table and oxygen sits over on the right-hand side. So we write the metallic potassium element first. FeCl3 is the chemical formula for iron 3 chloride. We can see that iron, Fe, sits to the left of chlorine, Cl. So again, the metal gets written first. LiF is the chemical formula for the ionic compound lithium fluoride. Lithium sits way over on the left of the periodic table and fluorine sits way over on the right hand side of the periodic table. So lithium is written first in both the name and the chemical formula. For molecular compounds, this general rule of thumb works pretty well in most cases. For example, we can see for carbon dioxide, CO2, that carbon lies left of oxygen in the periodic table. And so carbon is written first and oxygen is written second. For hydrogen chloride, HCl, we see that hydrogen sits well left of chlorine and so is written first. And lastly, dinitrogen pentoxide, N2O5, we can also see that nitrogen sits to the left of oxygen. This general rule of thumb also works for molecular compounds where the elements lie in the same vertical column or the same group. For sulfur dioxide, SO2, we can see that sulfur lies below oxygen in the periodic table and because it is lower, sulfur gets written first. Remember the general rule is that the element that is furthest down or furthest left is written first. The rule even works for compounds containing three elements. Calcium carbonate, CaCO3, contains calcium, carbon and oxygen. Looking at the periodic table, we see calcium is the furthest left, followed by carbon, and then oxygen. And so the elements are written in that order in both the chemical formula and the full name. Same with potassium permanganate, KMnO4. We see that potassium lies to the left with manganese in the middle and oxygen on the right. There are, however, exceptions to this general rule of thumb, and they normally involve hydrogen. For example, we can see that water H2O has hydrogen on the left and oxygen on the right. So the chemical formula for water is written as we might expect. But when we look at the way that hydrogen combines with other period two elements, such as nitrogen in the ammonium molecule NH3, we can see that nitrogen is written first, despite sitting to the right of hydrogen in the periodic table. And we see a similar thing here with methane, CH4 where the carbon is written first despite lying to the right of hydrogen. Unfortunately, hydrogen seems to be an exception for a lot of rules in chemistry. The actual technical rule is that in a chemical formula, the element that is the least electronegative is written first, and the element that is the most electronegative is written last. And we deal with the concept of electronegativity later in this video series.